In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the Trust Maker in ARCHICAD. Now we're currently in section, let's go back to floor plan to explain this. This is the same building, uh, same envelope I was using for the roof framing wizard. And what we looked at in that one is that we can create roof framing of a whole building, but it doesn't necessarily create each truss and create it accurately. So we're going to have a look at how to create a truss. Now let's go into this section. What I've done here is I've got a model. I can just select all the lines. Let's go control A, control X just for a second. So we see we've got a modeled building. We've got a wall, a slab, a footing, which is a beam, and a roof, which is a multi-plane roof. And it's also a composite roof, uh, which means we can see 90 mil framing, a, I think it's 45 mil from memory. Yeah, 45 mil for a, a roof batten and 30 mil to represent the thickness of tiles. Okay, so put, the, put those lines back on. What do these lines represent? When we're making a truss, we use lines to de describe, explain, the center of the members. And we use different colors to represent the different types of members. Now, this can be a little bit tricky if we want them to intersect properly and represent the way that a truss should. So it's a little bit easy here because I've already described with my composite the thickness of the frame. So the red represents the middle of the rafter uh, and the where the insulation is shown, that's representing the thickness of the rafter. Down below, the blue line is representing the middle line of my ceiling joist, and I've shown a, a dashed line here just to help identify for you what I mean by where I want the top of that ceiling joist to be. And the pink line represents the center of the web, and the dashed line is representing the outline of that web. To make it easy, I'm designing this based on the idea that all three of these members, the rafter, the web, and the ceiling joist, are all 90 millimeters tall. They're going to be 90 by 45 framing. There could be a lot of different things, but I think you really need to know what you're going to be making it out of or the thickness before you do this. Otherwise, it's going to offset the way that these connect. And if I want these to connect like a, a normal truss wood, a manufactured truss wood, not conventional roof framing necessarily, I need to make sure I get this accurate. So I'm drawing these dash lines, or I'm going to leave these dash lines in here for a moment, more as a way of identifying where that truss is sitting. So to create this web, what do I want to do? Move, mirror, copy. And I'm going to offset it not from the center line of the center. I'm going to offset it from here or mirror it from here. Meaning I want eventually the timber to meet in this sort of junction relationship. And then of course I'd have a, a multi-nail plate that would be joining these all together in a, again, a manufactured truss type of system. I will repeat this process. Again, I want to make sure that these lines are intersecting. I can go back and trim these later. I don't need to do that now. So mirror a copy. And again, I want to intersect around this point. And then one more time, move mirror a copy. Now that's fine for now. I could change these. I could change the angles of these. They don't all need to be mirrored. They could be different, differing angles in order to be able to create a more consistent uh, triangular break uh, or this way as well, breaking the distance. But for now, that'll be fine. I'm not trying to be too technical, just trying to explain this to you. Of course, you could rotate these if you wanted it to be at a different angle rather than just mirroring it. Now that I'm happy with all of these, I don't need any of my dashed lines. So if I was very clever, I could just select them all in one go, but I won't do that now. It's not going to take much time. I'll select them and delete them. And then I want to select the rest of these and trim them to that point. Now you see what I'm trying to do is make sure that they all intersect, make sure all of my lines, my solid lines, intersect with each other, but you'll see most importantly that they're not deliberately creating a triangle here, they're separated because I'm allowing for the thickness of each of the members. So now let's select all these lines, control A, and we're going to design, design extras, truss maker, create a truss. Now when I do this, if I do this correctly, what we're going to see in the truss profile is I have three different pens 
and therefore it's identifying these as three different elements. What did I forget to do? I forgot to mirror these once I'd finished. Move, let's try that again. Move, mirror a copy. That's better. Control A. Design, design extras, trust maker, create trust. Three different types. What are they all? I want them all to be the same. Uh, why did it come up with 45 by 90 already? Just because this isn't the first time I've done it. What do I want it to be? I could want it to be solid. I could want it to be hollow or a um, complex profile. I want it to be a timber construction using just a pen one. I'm happy with all the rest of this for now. I'll press OK. I'll just replace the one that I have here. And it's been made. So I'll go to the floor plan. Let's get out of this for a second. And here we see the truss has been created. So unlike the roof wizard tool, which created an entire roof of trusses, this has only created one truss. So of course, it'd be nice if it could do both. Uh, that's not necessarily what Archicad's built to do. So we need an add-on program or a different program to help us to create a roof full of trusses in this level of detail. But let's have a look at this one. So what does it look like? Here is our truss. And we see by being a little bit thoughtful with how it, we created it, these members are intersecting the way that I would expect them to with the type of truss I was creating. What's happened here? I chose to have a uh, perpendicular rather than a vertical junction. And the problem is once I've created it, I can't change it here because it's now saved as a library part. So I'd need to recreate that truss using the same thing and make sure that my intersection was vertical or I could edit that uh, library element. Let's look at this in 3D just to understand it. So this is the profile that we're left with. So hopefully that's helpful and you can understand how this is useful. The biggest advantage of using the existing roof that we have already is that we don't need to work out the trigon trigonometric functions. We don't need to do any slightly more complicated numeracy to figure this out. We can work it out graphically. I love that fact and I think ArchiCAD really helps us with that process. Hopefully it's helped you.